Hi there, I'm Beth, and today I'd like to share a few things with you. First, the topic of today's project, Marceline, the Vampire Queen. She's one of my favourite characters in the animated show Adventure Time. She's a musician, she kicks ass, and she has so many different looks throughout the show. Our whole family are Adventure Time fans, so we have lots of comics, books and toys that I can use as reference. But I can also look back at Enchantarium's incredible Marceline doll. Alex and Barb worked together to create an amazing punk rock and piercings version of Marceline. That's one of my favourite projects they've done. They very kindly gifted me the special sculpt that was created just for that project. And I've been desperate to get one painted up ever since. My husband printed some out with our resin 3D printer. The detail is incredible and required very little cleanup of the print afterwards. Just a touch of sanding where the supports were. I'm so grateful to be able to make my own vampire. I really love this sculpt. Her pointed ears and tiny teeth are so cute. So I'll be painting up a custom Marceline head for Smart Doll and combining her with a few different looks that I've been collecting together behind the scenes. The other subject of today's video, though, is an important component of the face-up process. Spray sealant. At the time I began this project, I was utterly unable to find any Mr. Super Clear flat or matte to buy in the UK. It seemed every retailer and small hobby shop across the country was sold out, and due to strict postal restrictions on pressurised cans, it's impossible for me to have it sent from overseas. I saw again and again online that the Warhammer, previously Games Workshop, own brand of sealant spray, Munitorum, was highly recommended for doll customisers. I went to pick up a can in person at the Aberdeen Warhammer store and decided I would give it a try and share my findings. The best aspect of Mr. Super Clear is the papery matte surface, which makes drawing in pencil and brushing on pastels very easy. I hope that this spray will behave the same way and that it'll not be too shiny. There's no specific gloss or matte version available, just a kind of matte satin finish. It will still require vigorous shaking, careful temperature control and ventilation during use. Wear a mask and be sure to leave adequate curing time between layers. This one needs 15 minutes. They also recommend short, sharp bursts as you spray, not long ones. Before I can get into that though, I have to paint these grey resin heads to properly match the rest of the Smart Doll body. I gave them both a wipe down with rubbing alcohol to remove any oily fingerprints and will look out some acrylic paints to mix up and try to match with. I turned out to be super lucky and found that this Anita's acrylic in the colour charcoal mixed with titanium white resulted in a near perfect match. I use a tiny bit of thinner to get the consistency nice and smooth and painted the head in lots and lots of thin layers. I alternated the direction of my brush strokes too, to try to even out any banding. The head on the right is still in progress, but you can see the difference. I'll carry on painting and prep the second head too, as a backup just in case. While the last layers of paint dried, I looked to Enchantarium's Marceline, as well as some official grey smart dolls for inspiration. 
they've produced a vampire named Transcendence, who is so striking with those red eyes. And also Legion, with gorgeous emerald eyes and hair, but also a more stern expression and fantastic eyebrows. This will only be my second smart doll face-up, so I'm not super confident yet in the eye designs, but I sketched out a couple ideas. With a cat visitor on my desk, I look out my usual face-up materials. A collection of watercolour pencils, various brands, some super tiny q-tips, and I'll also use soft rounded makeup brushes, and my collection of pan pastels. The quality of these are second to none and so easy to apply. I've opted for my second sketch and have already applied two coats of the Munitorum varnish to the blank head. It doesn't look too shiny to me, so let's see how the colour goes on. I started penciling in the makeup on one side. and was deeply relieved to see the watercolour pencil went on easily. This one's a Derwent Ink Tense in Payne's Grey. I then set about roughing in my design in the same pencil. I try to find reference points for each main line so that I can try to get each eye symmetrical, though I'm not too hard on myself if they're not. I pencil in her eyebrows and use a kneaded putty eraser to remove any wildly inaccurate lines. I know I'll need to colour inside her mouth, so started to use a wet brush to lift the pigment from a red watercolour pencil, since a tiny brush will fit in there better. I changed my mind and painted the mouth and teeth with acrylics instead, just in case the spray varnish doesn't get into all of the inside. I'll be brushing on glossy varnish in there later and I don't want to accidentally lift up any water-based paint. My next big test is pastels. Will the Munitorum varnish hold on to the dusty pigment? I start with the tiny q-tips and rub pastel onto the lips. Again, I'm delighted to see it holds the pigment really well. I switch to a small makeup brush and apply red to the inner eyes. The brush also applies pigment to the varnished surface beautifully. It's looking good so far. Perhaps Munitorum will be a good substitute for MSC whenever there is a supply issue. I continue adding pastel and pencil to fill in my design, and once I'm satisfied, spray another layer of Munitorum to seal the colour and save my progress. It still looks good, nothing melted off, so I continue layering up my pencils and adding more detail. I used a little white and red pencil to highlight the eye creases and used a brush with watercolour pencil pigment to deepen some areas of colour. Finally, I draw in the lashes and seal the whole face up with a few layers of Munitorum. My Marcy will need some eyes. I bought a few silicon moulds like this online and we'll use one to make white resin eye bases. 
I color the UV resin with white alcohol ink and cure under UV light. I made a couple pairs and will paint the iris with acrylic paints. I'll add some sparkle with these glitter flakes and we'll use black beads as the pupils. The concave hollow will then be filled with clear resin, which will magnify the pupil and finish it all off. Here I've added a tiny drop of resin to each hollow, added the beads and will add the glitter flakes too. I'll cure this before adding any more clear resin on top. This way the beads and glitter will stay at the bottom and not float up to the surface. As I cured my last layer of resin, disaster struck, and three of my four eyes developed little bubbles which popped out onto the surface. There doesn't seem to be any air pockets though, so I will wet sand the raised bits and rinse them, before adding a new top coat all over. Disaster averted. I will gloss varnish the inside of Marceline's mouth and gloss her inner eyes too. Once dried, I will add her eyes. Here she is, ready now to stick in the eyes with a little ring of blue tack. She also has a 3D printed head cap. The file for this one is on the Smart Doll website, along with lots of other freebies. Well, I must say, I'm really happy with how she's come out. What do you think of the Munitorum varnish? I'm satisfied that the finish is smooth and not too shiny. I've yet to test it out on vinyl, but I think it'll be fine on Blythe faces too. I'll try it out. I want to quickly thank Charvet, from the My Lady Disdain Discord. She gifted me with this smart doll wig stand. I've only just printed it out, but will use it when I'm next creating a wig. Thanks! I'm torn between these two wigs for Marcy. The long black one is closest to her original design, but the dark blue is just so cute too. Please let me know which look you prefer in the comments. If you have any questions, pop them down below too. And as we see some final shots, I had way too much fun taking these, let me say thank you to my fantastic supporters over on Patreon. Catherine Smith, Duang Watan Wuti, and Rhiannon are my newest members over there. Thank you all so much for your help in keeping these videos coming. Well, before anyone panics, I did find that Mr. Superclear appeared to have been delivered again to the UK, so I was able to get some ordered. Once they arrive, I'll have nothing stopping me from getting properly back into customising Blythe's, which will include commissions through Patreon soon. Please check out my links in the video description below. Thank you so much for watching, I do hope you enjoyed it. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.